nice. <laughs> Excellent. So who in this group wants to be a better skier? Who's not raising their hand all the way up? Come on, I want to be a better skier. Yeah, all right. So does it take skills to become a better skier? Yeah. And so what does it take to have a skill? What is a skill? What's a skill? Something you're good at, okay? What what make what do we do to make a skill? Practice, okay. We have to practice to, to develop a skill. You have to work hard, good. Your coach has been hounding on this. So we're gonna break it down even farther and understand that the way we move is the foundation of a skill. And today we're gonna practice movement. <laughs> um, so I have a question for you about training and how much, how much time we spend training. So who knows, how many hours of training do we get in a season? What's your name? You don't know what your name is? I, yeah, I know what my name is. So what's your name? Lara. Lara? Am I saying that right? All right, Lara, how many hours of training do we get in a season? Oh, we got a hand up back there. 76 hours of training in a season. Where do you get that number from? <laughs> OK. OK, anybody else want to guess at how many hours in a season we get? 102 hours in a season. Where do you get that number from? All right, let, let, let's, let's do some math together. Who knows how to multiply? Raise your hand if you know how to do multiplication. Yeah, you hold on there, because you cheated. <laughs> He's been reading my script. How many days in a season? How many days in a season? Let's just talk about the days. OK, for here at Wyndham, the number of training days we get is about, let's use it for simple math, let's say 20. 20 days. Who here trains 20 days out of the season here at Wyndham? No? Who, tra who trains more than 20 days? Come on. All right, I like that. So how many hours do you get in a day of training? How many? Six hours? She trains for six hours. How many do you train for? Eight. Eight hours? How many hours do you train for? Seven. It's not correct. Why isn't it correct? Because, um, so you do the when, 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 um, when the and, um, and you only have to the time while you are sliding on snow. And that only then would hold it in the middle of the day. And then you only have to be able to get Ah, OK. So while you're riding a chairlift, does that count as training? While you're standing in lift line, are you training? No. It can be. So what about when you're standing around looking at your phone? Is that training? No. What about when you're eating? No. What about snack time? No. Oh, so there's quite a few deductions there. What about when you're standing at the top of the course ready to go on and run a race course? No. Is that training? No. Not really. You're not. Because what do you need to do to learn? You have to move. We have to move if we're going to train. That's part of learning is you have to move. So I did an experiment with some athletes many years ago where we timed every time they were sliding. So it wasn't on the chairlift. It wasn't when they were waiting in line. It wasn't when they were having lunch or snack. It was only when they were sliding. How much of that time do you think you'd have when you're out there? Three hours. That's a good guess. Who thinks it's three hours or more? Oh, we got a few that think it's three hours or more. All right, who thinks it's two hours or less? Okay, so how, so how much? Um, I feel like it's like, a, I don't know, an hour and 30 He thinks an hour and 30 minutes. So we started at eight hours. He's down to an hour and 30 minutes. And Blake, what do you think it is? 
You think it's an hour? Blake, what do you think it is? 30 minutes. I'm gonna say it's probably between what these two think it is. So we started at eight hours, and when we actually do the math, and we add it all up, and we look at how much time we're actually sliding on snow, it's somewhere between an hour to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. That's it. So if we're only on snow 25 days, let's call it 30 days, how many hours are we training through the whole season? So my math worked out when I did all the equations and I did the tests and I calculated how much time our, our kids were training. It was somewhere around 20 to 30 hours in a season. So for the whole season, you get 20 to 30 hours of training. Less than a day. Less than a full day of, yeah, 24 hours in a day. It's a day or less of training for the whole season. And you thought you were getting six hours a day. So, what we need to do is, we have to learn to take advantage of the time that we're not on snow. And that is teaching our body how to move. And that's why you're here, because if we are moving, we are learning. And if we can practice moving at home, you can be ready to hit the slopes and be even better. So you can take the time and add on to it. So if we only have 30 hours for the whole season, you can practice 10 hours at home and you, you almost double the amount of training time you have. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make sure you know how to move when your coach asks you to move. So who wants to come up and be my assistant? All right, Blake, we'll start with you. Come on up. Sit on the edge of the chair. Very, very edge. All right. So we're going to make a ski turn to that direction. So which foot is his outside foot? Is it his right or his left? Is it, is it this one? No. So that one's his outside foot. Yeah. All right. That's what I like to hear. What does he do with that foot if he's going that way? Laura. Put pressure on that foot. Good answer. What else? Aha, so he's saying move the legs over. I like that, moves the legs. Do you want to show him? Um, you don't even have to tell me, just show. He did this, he was rolling your ankle. Okay, he said roll his ankle. We talk about tipping the foot. So you see what he's doing right here? He's tipping that foot over to go that way. I want you all to practice that. I want everyone to stand up. Go ahead and stand up. And you're in a turn to the left. So we're putting pressure on what foot? Which foot are we, we're turning to the left, what, where's the pressure, right foot or left foot? Right. right foot. And so what do we do with that foot is, look what Blake's doing, don't move from here, just, and I, all I want you to do is work on the right foot. And so it's this motion. Can you move just that foot? Now, of course, we have to do something with the other foot. You want to show them? Good job. All right, Blake. You can step down. You want to come up? You got to tell us your name to the crowd? Wyatt. All right, Wyatt. You want to show us what we're working on? On the chair. You can do it standing. So Wyatt's going to show us here. Let's do this. Let's start back in a neutral spot. And you're gonna, we're, gonna, we're going to make a turn to the left. What do you do with this one? Let's start with just the foot. Stand back up, center yourself. I want you just to move that foot to go that way. Ah, this is good. Back to flat. Do that again. So when he does that, what does that do to the ski? Angulation. Puts the ski on what? On an edge. This is really good. Do it again. Flatten it out. 
What I like from Wyatt is that that's not moving. That just that is moving. This is really good. Okay, let's show the other one. Very good. Now let's go back to this one. Now, now we're going to add the other foot, but the same direction. So if we're going that way, we have to move this foot, don't we? So one and two. And right now, for your practice, it's always sequential, which means little toe, big toe. Sometimes it might be big toe or little toe. So everyone stand up. And I would like you to do little toe, big toe. Good. Go back to flat. Little toe, big toe. Go ahead and step down. Laura, you want to jump up here? Yes, you can. All right, show the crowd little toe, big toe to the other direction, this way towards me. All right, again. Back to flat. And what th one, th one thing when we ski, you hear a lot about having pressure wear in your ski boot, in the front. And so you have to flex what? I can't hear you. Flex your what? Ankle. Flex your what? Ankle. I want to hear you say flex ankle. Flex ankle. Flex our ankle. Flex our ankle. Say it again. Flex our ankle. Louder. Flex our ankle. Okay. And then we do what? We tip our tip our feet. What do we do? What do we do? Tip our feet. Nice. All right. Let's see it. Can you do it without looking at them? There we go. Okay. Really? Laura seems she wants to explain it. Give it a shot. Pressure on your little toe and your big toe. You put pressure on your little toe and your big toe. Put pressure on your little toe and your big toe. So I think that's a great way to think about it. That if I'm going that way, little toe, big toe. Some people might think it differently. In the end, it doesn't because you're thinking which one are you lifting, right? Yes. Yeah, she's saying, which one are you putting pressure on? I think what's important is to understand that we think about them sequentially. And, and this is why, and this is important for the coaches and parents to understand, is that when we think about it at the si in a simultaneous sense, we see this happening. And this is not what we're looking for. We're looking for tipping and rotation of the legs. So it's this kind of motion we're looking for. Not this, or not this kind of thing. All right, Show, give us one more demo. So in this situation, she's thinking little toe, big toe. We can also, or we need also to practice big toe, little toe. You have to, you have to practice both sequences. So big toe, little toe, show us that. That's little toe, big toe. Now show me big toe, little toe. Big toe, little toe. Yeah. Like yes. So let's, come on, stand up. Let's do it again. Let's all practice this. Big toe, little toe now. Are you in the front of your boot? Is everybody in the front of their imaginary boot? Back to a flat ski, big toe, little toe, which looks like this. I'll face the same way you are. Big toe, little toe, big toe, little toe, back to flat. Big toe, little toe, back to flat. Go ahead and step down. Good job. Say it. Little toe, big toe. Say it while you do it. Say it while you do it. Repeat it. 
Say it while you do it. Okay, let's go the other way. Whatever way you're practicing, do the other What I'm teaching you is really hard when your foot is in here. And then this is attached to a ski and you're sliding down the slope and it's bumpy and it's rough and you're trying to learn how to do this. So by you practicing this at home, you can get better at it. So when we get on snow and your coach goes, we're gonna do little toe, big toe, you're gonna be able to do it like that. So we can take the time that we spend training and you can literally double it by practicing at home because we know we have less than how many hours to practice? Less than 30 hours of practice for the whole season. So you can add to that by practicing where? All right, good job. Now we need to, so that was the foot and the ankle, now we need to practice the leg. Little toe, big toe. Now there's another turn. Big toe, the little toe. Under what circumstances do our athletes do one so I, I think this is a great question that what in this situation we're really talking about a training approach so ultimately we're not going to think about this in it two years from now when you're ski racing you're not going to think about little toe big toe it's just going to happen and they'll end up happening more or less at the same time because it's natural you don't think about when you walk. When you come up the stairs, you don't walk up the stairs and go, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, do you? You just walk up the stairs. You're going to do this when you ski. You're just gonna do little toe, big toe, or big toe, little toe, because your body's just gonna react. But right now, you need to practice, and you need to practice each one separately, because we're chunking it up, we're breaking it down into its pieces. So when we go out there, your coach is gonna say, this run, little toe, big toe. And next run, he might say big toe, little toe, and you'll know what he means. Eventually, you're going, you're going to get to the point, if you want to be really good, you'll do this on your own. You'll be sliding along, and you're, you're going to think to yourself, ah, big toe, little toe. And you're going to do this a lot. And then eventually, just like walking up the stairs, you didn't have to think about it, it will just happen. That'll be part of your scheme. Did I answer it? Indirectly, I think, but not a direct answer. But, but I definitely knew what you said. Yeah, so th there is no, ultimately there's no right way, little toe, big toe, or big toe, little toe. What you're saying is, they will figure it out over time as they master it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it generally, they happen more or less over time at the same time. So if this whole group can figure this out, we're really doing really well. And what I'm seeing and what I saw last weekend when you were all out on White Way, and this is why we put you on White Way, is this is a very, very important skill. And you need to practice it, and you need to practice it on flatter terrain. And what I saw last weekend on White Way was amazing. I thought for this group as a whole was incredible. But we have to keep practicing it because it's the repetition that matters. It just takes maturity and strength for some kids, or it's just the brain connecting to the legs? Brain connecting. That's what I think. Um, we'll, we'll go into some other pieces, but yeah, they all have to kind of work together, and I do, I do think it's the brain connecting the neurons and making, the move, making it happen. And it's just practice. It's just like a baby learning to walk. Right. It gets up, it stumbles, or like, it's not because the child doesn't have the ability to walk, it just hasn't figured it out yet. Right. This is the same way. It's, and, and also understanding that learning it in a ski boot while you're sliding is incredibly hard and that's why we have to do this. So this is important. Simple skill or simple movement that's part of a skill because we have to take our skills and break them down. And now we're going to make it more complicated. We're going to do that. And who can do that? I want to see if who can do that without this? I stay pointed here, and I do that leg and that leg. And then I go back to center, and I go the other way. And this time, let's all stand. If I say the ball of your foot, everyone stand up. We're still all practicing. Stand on the ball of your foot. Do you know what that means? 
You called it out. What did you call it? Earlier, you called it something. How am I standing? You have to be what? It, athletic stance. Yes. And so it's not like this. It's like that. And then I'm going to turn my legs without this part moving. Even this simple process, this is a really base, this is a basic piece of a skill. And this is pretty hard. And so to do this on snow is really, really hard. While you've got skis attached to your boots, which are, which are attached to your foot, while you're sliding down the hill and the snow is bumpy, the change of direction, the wind is blowing, all that's happening. And maybe your coach has put some gates in the ground and you have to do this at the same time really hard. So if you practice this at home, it's going to help you. Because this part of this action is part of this action. What's the first thing we have to do? Flex our what? Ankle. What do we do? Flex our ankle. Okay, show me. There we go. Now, Sienna, right? Sienna, point your knee to my hand. Bring it over and touch it. Good. Now go back to center. Do it without looking at it. Flex your ankle. Now do it. Back to center. Turn it towards me again. This motion of what she's making right now is the same motion that we did. You keep doing that. So that motion, she's actually turning her leg, but she's keeping her foot planted. That motion and that motion, the leg is rotating a little bit. Coaches dive in and check to see how we're doing. We're looking to just the left leg. Are their feet always like when we're doing these drills, are we shoulder width apart? Uh, like, what are your feet doing? The, the width of the feet are between your hips and your shoulders. So here's hip width, here's shoulder width. So you can play with somewhere between here and there. It's probably good to practice with both. You got it? Is it time to go out and practice outside? Time to do it with our skis on? Say it again. Say it again. I can't hear you. That's it. All right, guys.